long time, Gerda could walk no more. She knew that she had to rest her tired little legs before going anywhere, so she settled down under a tree. She was most surprised when a merry raven came and hopped towards her. Ah, ah, good day, good day, he said. Gerda was surprised and delighted. She had been feeling very lonely, and the raven looked like a friendly little fellow. Have you by any chance seen my good friend Kay? She asked and told him everything that had happened. She described Kay carefully. The raven closed his eyes and thought about it. You know what? I might have seen your friend, he said. Gerda stood up in joy. She hugged the raven so hard that she nearly squeezed him flat. Oh, really? Can you please take me to the place? Is he anywhere around here? Asked Gerda. I don't mind taking you there. It isn't too far anyway. It's just that your friend might have forgotten you. For he lives with the princess now, said the raven. Is that so? Asked Gerda. I'll tell you the story as we walk. Listen, in the kingdom where we're going now, there lives a princess who is extraordinarily clever. She reads many books and knows what's happening everywhere around the world. She decided to marry, and there was only one thing she wanted. What? Asked Gerda out of curiosity. She invited everyone to come and speak with her. She promised to choose the one who'd talk boldly and wisely with her and feel at home in her presence, said the raven. Did Kay come to the palace? She asked. I saw a little person walk boldly through the palace, and he didn't even have a horse. He had long hair and wore shabby clothes, said the raven. I also remember that his boots creaked loudly when he walked. Oh, it must be Kay, there's no doubt, cried Gerda in delight. I remember he had his creaky boots on when we went to play with his sled that day. From what I heard, he didn't come to woo the princess. He merely wanted to speak to her and gain wisdom. It turned out that the princess liked his bold and polite nature very much, said the raven. Will you take me to meet Kay, please? Gerda begged. Of course, said the raven. My bride lives in the palace, and she can arrange for us to meet the prince. The raven then led her through the royal garden. That night, after the lights went out, the raven led Gerda through a back door that was half open. Another raven was waiting for them there. What a pleasure to meet you, said the second raven. Come, let's go up these stairs and head to the royal chamber where the prince rests. A single lamp was burning in the chamber, and Gerda saw the prince lying in his bed. Okay, how I've missed you, Gerda said in a loud whisper. The prince heard her and turned around. Gerda was surprised and dismayed to see that it was not Kay after all. By this time, the princess had also woken up. Who are you, little girl, and what are you doing here? Asked the princess. Gerda sat down and told them her story. She wiped her eyes and sniffed loudly. The prince and princess felt very sorry for her. praised the ravens for helping Gerda, but gently told them that they should never raise false hopes without being sure. You can sleep here for the night, the prince said. I'll arrange for a fine horse and carriage to take you to meet your friend, the princess offered. And I see that you are badly in need of a pair of shoes. You shall have those too. Gerda bowed and thanked them for their generosity. The next day, Gerda was dressed in the finest clothes. The princess sent her off in a splendid horse and carriage with a coachman, footman and outriders. Gerda waved and thanked them both and the ravens for everything they'd done for her. The prince and the princess wished her success and the ravens flew along with her as long as they could manage, then finally bid her farewell. The prince and princess are sleeping at this late hour. What am I going to do now? Well, firstly, you need to ring the bells. Then play the melody that lily flowers love. That must be Kay. We need to wake him up. Oh, I was wrong. It's not Kay. Who are you? What happened? Your Majesty. This girl looks for her sworn brother. 
He's been missing for days. Oh, poor girl. You are probably freezing. Do not worry. We will help you. Let's get a warm outfit for you. for a long and cold trip. Thank you so much. I feel warmer now. There is a carriage outside waiting for you. Have a good trip. Gerda rode through the thick woods and the carriage sparkled and shone like diamonds. All of a sudden, a band of robbers jumped out from behind the bushes. Halt! If you value your life, cried the robbers, flashing their swords menacingly. They pushed away the coachman and everybody else and caught hold of the horse by its reins. The leaders of the robbers was a tall female robber who looked fearsome and bold. Her daughter, a girl about Gerda's age, was sitting on her shoulders, watching everything with shining eyes. Ouch! She cried and dropped the knife that she'd raised. Her daughter had bitten her in the ears. You will not harm the little girl, said the daughter. She will stay in our castle and play with me. After they'd looted everything, the female robber and the robber maiden got into their carriage. They made Gerda get inside as well. They rode for a long time through the thick woods. The robber maiden took Gerda's warm woolen muff for herself. Then she hugged Gerda and said, Nobody will harm you as long as we're friends. But if you dare to refuse to be my friend, I'll push you off the carriage. It seemed like they'd been riding forever, but the carriage finally stopped in front of an old and crumbling castle. It was riddled with many pigeonholes and looked so ramshackle that Gerda was afraid that it would fall down. The robber maiden led Garda straight to her room, which had carpets and straw beds in the corner. You shall spend the night with me and my little friends, said the robber maiden, pointing to the pigeons. Gerda noticed that there were about a hundred pigeons, and all of them were fast asleep. In a corner stood a reindeer. He had a copper ring around his neck. Meet my pet, said the robber maiden, pointing to the reindeer. After they'd had a meal and settled down to sleep, the robber maiden says, Now tell me, what brought you here to the dark woods all alone? Gerda narrated everything that had happened. She told her about Kay and how much she missed him. The robber maiden listened, but soon she grew drowsy and slept. She kept her hand over Gerda while she slept. The robber maiden was snoring loudly, but Gerda was wide awake. Suddenly, the pigeons called out to her. Oh, we've seen the boy. We've seen him travel in a sledge pulled by a white carriage. They said, it belongs to... To the Snow Queen. Do you know where they are headed? Gerda asked, hopefully. The Snow Queen has gone to Lapland, where there is ice and snow everywhere. Ask the reindeer. He knows the place well, said the pigeons. Of course I know the place, said the reindeer. It's a glorious place, and it is beautiful. The Snow Queen has her summer tent there. But she doesn't live there. She lives in the icy, cold North Pole. Oh, poor Kay. He'll be taken there unless we rescue him soon, said Gerda, and slept with a heavy heart. In the morning, 
She told the robber maiden about what the pigeons and the reindeer had told her. If you want to see your friend so badly, I'll help you. The robber maiden said gruffly. We'll have to be quick. Because if my mother wakes up, you'll never be able to escape. Oh, thank you so much, said Gerda. The robber maiden looked straight at the reindeer and asked, If I set you free, will you take this little girl safely to Lapland? The reindeer nodded and jumped in delight. She didn't waste any time. She threw the door open and lifted Gerda onto the reindeer's back. Here. Have these woolen gloves, for you'll need them, she said, stuffing a pair of gloves into Gerda's hands. I want the woolen muff for myself, but these will do for you. She then untied the rope, and the reindeer bounded out of the room quickly. The reindeer leapt through bushes and crossed the moors fast as he could. Before long, they were in Lapland. Some pigeons saw Kay, and they say that he is in the Snow Queen's palace in Lapland. Lapland? Reindeer, do you know where that is? Of course. I was born there. I played on the snowy fields when I was young. Well, little girl, I'm ready to help you and even lend you my reindeer. But you can't just ride on it. You have to find a rope and a pillow to make a saddle. Oh, there it is. The saddle is ready. Also, don't forget to take a bridle. You found it! Take the woolen boots and mittens. You got it. Now you're ready for the long trip. Hey, little rascal, bring me something to drink. Oops, you can't go until my mom falls asleep. What should we do? I must leave quickly. I believe we could make a sleeping potion. Great idea, reindeer. Help me make a sleeping potion. It's almost ready. Let's dilute it. She doesn't drink milk. Compot is for kids. Yes, ale is what we need. Now we have to stir it. Ready. She has fallen asleep. Now you can be on your way. <laughs>